I want to talk about a touchy subject, suicide. I was 14 the first time I took a bunch of pills and went to bed and hoped that I never woke up. And I've had two other times in my life where I came very close. And the last one was about six years ago. And I never talked about it. I never told anybody. I never, I tried to get the help, but I didn't know where to look and in the right places to get help. Last night, I went with my daughter to a Hope Squad meeting. And about six years ago is when I went to my first Hope Squad meeting as a parent at the high school. My daughter was in the Hope Squad. A different daughter was in the Hope Squad. And um, they had a parent training for the Hope Squad. And I just absolutely loved it because I actually started to understand some of the things I had been struggling with for over 40 years. Um, I started to understand how to openly talk about it and deal with it. And I actually had one child that was struggling with it. And I knew it was so important. And so I've had, I think, three kids now that have participated in Hope Squad on an elementary level, on a junior high level, and a high school level. And last night we watched a movie, and off the top of my head, I can't even think it's called Ascend, the Ascend, the Ascension, or Ascend, Ascending, or something like that. I'll have to find the true name. It's Ascend something. And basically it's the story of a girl who was a junior in high school. She was cheerleader, like everything going for her, and she tried to commit suicide and she survived, but she was paralyzed. And it kind of turned her life around that she turned it around and realized how grateful she was. And she started going around Louisiana, promoting Hope Squad and trying to help other people in suicide prevention and having walks and all of these great things. And it was awesome. And the school was previewing it to see if it's something they wanted to bring to the school, bring to the community. And I just loved it. Because I went away from that meeting and like I made some comments in the meeting and I was like, ooh, do I even want to say that I am a suicide attempt survivor with my daughter sitting next to me? Because I didn't know if she had ever known that and if I had ever talked openly with that daughter about that. And so I took the opportunity on the drive home to talk to her about it to explain what I had gone through as a child and even as an adult and to explain um, that it's okay and we talk about it and that you can help people and that um, and that it needs to be spoken of more. That is one reason why I'm so passionate about mental health and things that people can do to naturally help them. I have a friend that I've helped, that I've actually driven with and checked her in to um, a suicide watch and I went with her. And when I talk to the people there, I'm like, do you discuss things like what they're eating, how they're exercising, how their health is more than just their medication? And they're like, no, we check them in, we adjust their meds and we send them back out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there is so much more to that. Like, yes. That is needed, counselors, medication, all those things are needed, but it's also needed of like, what are they doing on a day-to-day -day for their bodies and their health? 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut. So you better believe that things you eat, things you do, how you move your body is all going to affect how your mental health is. And it's all going to affect like how you can deal with stress and anxiety and handle things. And so I believe everything's a tool. Like if you're having problems, go check yourself in, reach out, get help, find a trusted friend, friend try to find a trusted adult, somebody, tell them what you're going through so that they can get you the help you need. And if you know of somebody that's struggling Reach out to somebody 
who is a trained professional that can help them because it's better for them to be upset with you and to still be here than to not be here. And so I realized after going to this meeting last night that I need to be more of an advocate of this. I need to like openly share my experiences and things that I have been going through. And I always thought that there was something wrong with me because there was nothing like a big event that happened in my life. I just always had this dark cloud that followed me. And I always thought there was something wrong with me because I lived a good life. I loved my parents. I loved my siblings. But like, I just hated life, you know, and I wanted to just take a rest from life. I wanted to just have a break because I just couldn't stand everything I was going through. And even as an adult, like I love my spouse. I love my kids. I'm so blessed with everything in my life. But for years, I still had that dark cloud. And it wasn't until I started healing my body and reaching out and getting the help I need and using the tools that I needed to give my body the nutrients that it needed so that it could perform properly that that black cloud finally lifted, that I was able to um, use all of the tools to finally move forward. And now I realize that like, I have to be an advocate for other people. I have to let their know, let them know that there is hope. There's hope. There's hope in feeling better. There's hope in helping others. There's hope in openly sharing this. Like, I'm so glad my kids are involved in the Hope Squad and that they can be a good friend. And for anyone that's not, doesn't have Hope Squad in their school schools, like request it. Like, it's so great. They do it on the level. Like elementary, it's be a good friend, be a friend to those kids that don't have friends. You know, junior high, there's more training of notice the signs and find a trusted adult. And then in high school, it's, you know, it's, you know, be on the lookout. If you notice something, let people know. Like these kids are not to solve the problems of the other people. It's to help those people get help. These kids are the, like the eyes and ears because they see more and more than adults and teachers and, and people around. And, and when I came home from the meeting last night, I was talking to the on the phone with a friend about a mutual friend that was struggling with thoughts and that was struggling with um, depression and anxiety. And we were talking about ways that we could help her. And then this morning I got a call from a friend again telling me how somebody had lost their life this morning to suicide. And it was a different person. And I'm like, it is around us all the time. And mental health is something that we talk about. I was always afraid that I'd be looked at it as like, is she doing it for attention? Is she doing it? Like, is she crazy? Like, I don't want kids know because I always thought that my kids would think I'm like the crazy mom that had depression or whatever. So I was silent. I was one of those silent sufferers. I never talked about anything I was going through. And now I'm like, that only is hurting people. That's only um, hurting my, my kids because maybe they're struggling with some of the same things I struggled with and they don't know I struggled with them. And so I love that I took the opportunity to talk to my daughter about things that I had been through in my life so that not only would she know what I've been through, but if she ever goes through it or if she knows somebody going through it, that she can also um, know what I've been through to then maybe reach out and then we can help that person get help. So I encourage everybody, like, talk about it, share feelings, reach out to people. If you know anyone that's struggling, like reach out and help them reach out. Sometimes it's just, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I can listen or I can just be here for you because sometimes they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. Like, like I never knew what to do, where to go, like how to, I'd always just be like, there's something wrong with me. Like, why can't I deal with this? I'm smart. I'm educated. Like, why can't I get rid of these, this black cloud that followed me, you know? And it wasn't until I broke that silence that things started getting better. And my husband was like, let's get you the help you need, you know? Like, let's figure this out. And, and I was like, why did I struggle in silence for so long? Like, why did I not share it with more people? So I encourage you, reach out to loved ones. Reach out to people that just come on, you know, that, that pop up into your head that you're thinking about and you're like, I need to reach out to that person because if they're coming to your mind, then you need to reach out and they're coming to your mind for a reason. And maybe it's just to check in on them. I don't know how many times like 
somebody checked in on me and I'm like, wow, that is exactly when I needed it. That is exactly like, I still remember a card I got on a day that was a very tough day and I didn't know I was going to make it through it. And I got a card from somebody that day that they just dropped it off and they were like, I don't know why, but you needed this today. And that's exactly what I needed to make it through that day. So reach out, talk more, share more, talk openly about it with people. And let's